Part 1, Chapter 6. Mr. Connect had been my Pop Warner coach for years, but in eighth grade, his son, Joey Connect, quit playing. Our new coach was Mr. Rooney, a guy about my dad's age who'd played college ball at Oregon State. I liked Mr. Connect okay, but I was excited when I heard we were getting a new coach. The first day, Rooney had us line up on the 50-yard line. He'd call a name, and then that guy would step forward, and he'd ask a few questions. The typical stuff. Finally, it was my turn. Nick Johnson, he said. I stepped forward and gave a little wave. Here, I said. He looked down at his clipboard and then looked back at me. You're the old kid, right? The one who should be in high school? The one playing on an exemption? It was like being hit in the face. I was totally embarrassed, totally humiliated. Most of the guys on the team didn't know I was older, and the few who did had known for so long that it almost as it was as if they didn't know. Rooney brought it back, and the way he said it made it seem as though I was a cheater. I started kindergarten a year late, I said. My dad thought, are you Mike Johnson's kid, the guy who played for the Huskies? He said it as if it was something to be ashamed of. I nodded. All right, Johnson, you don't have to give me your life story, though I'm sure it's fascinating. What position do you play? Running back, he snorted. Figures. Practice was like every other first practice. We did a lot of simple drills, ran a bunch, and stretched a bunch. Only for me, it was different. Mr. Connect had always praised everything I did. I'd always been the one who demonstrated how something was supposed to be done. For Rooney, nothing I did was good enough. He wouldn't even call me by my name. I was red to him. Pick it up, red, he'd say, or pay attention, red. I hated being called red, and the more he did it, the more I hated him. After practice, my dad asked about the new coach. When I complained about him, my dad closed his eyes and scratched the top of his head. Rooney, Rooney, Rooney. I think I remember him. It seems to me there was some play where I ran over him and into the end zone. It ended up on Sports Center. My dad laughed. That's why the guy doesn't like you. He's still feeling the pain. Just ignore him. But I couldn't ignore him because he kept calling me red, and every time he did, I could taste the anger. Always, in every camp and on every team, I'd been the hard worker, the guy who did everything by the book. But I wasn't that way with Rooney. He was disrespecting me, so that's what he got back. If he told us to get in a perfectly straight line for some drill, I made sure I had one foot sticking out six inches. If he told us to listen up, I always turned my shoulders to the side and looked off across the field. If he told us our break was over, I always took one more slug from my water bottle. Rooney would see and glower, but what could he do? I was his best running back. You can't bench your best running back for a little twitch of the mouth. There were two new kids on the team. One of them, Gerard Sampson, quit after the first day. The other was Drew Carney, a funny-looking kid with big ears. Drew played quarterback, had great size and strength, and had a gun for an arm. The guy was a player, and from day one, Rooney loved him. Whenever Rooney blew his whistle, Drew was always the first one in line. In every drill, Drew gave 110%. All through those early practice sessions, Rooney would sing single Drew out and tell the rest of us that we should try to be like him. One Friday after I loafed during a blocking drill, Rooney pointed a stubby finger at me. You there, Red, I want you to pull the towel against Drew. The rest of you guys, form a circle and watch. I want you to see this. Pulling the towel was Rooney's favorite drill. It was basically tug of war, only it was one-on-one -on -one instead of in teams. But the watching part was different. Always before, we'd had our own partner, and we'd all be tugging and sweating simultaneously. Only you and your partner would know who won. Rooney had his face off at the 50-yard line. The object was simple. Pull the other guy completely over the line. I took hold of one end of the towel. Drew grabbed the other. I looked towards Rooney, but before I was ready, he blew his whistle. A split second later, I was lying face down in the dirt on Drew's side of the 50. The guys circled around, laughed. Rooney glared down. That wasn't fair, I said. I wasn't ready. You're never ready, Rooney barked. Go ahead, pick up the towel, try again. I took my end of the towel and grabbed it as tightly as I could. I didn't look to Rooney this time. I kept my eyes on Drew. The whistle blew. I dug in my heels into the ground and pulled. My arms started aching. My legs started cramping. I tried to turn just a bit, but in that split second, something happened because for the second time, I was lying face first in front of Drew. And for the second time, everyone was laughing. You wanna go a third time, Rooney said. I shook my head. I didn't think you would. You're Mike Johnson's son through and through. You're going to end up just like your father, the talent of an all-star, the attitude of a punk. I'd seen that smirk on your face for too long. I've seen it, and I'm sick of it. I'm not having bad actors poisoning my team. 
So you think it over, Mr. All-Star Mick Johnson. You want to play for me? Then you practice the way I want you to practice. If not, don't come back. Now go sit on the bleachers until the end of the practice. I went to the bleachers and sat, my hands clenched in fists, a lump in my throat. I wanted to hit Rooney for what he'd said and for what he'd done. It wasn't my fault he was a lousy linebacker. It wasn't my fault my dad had humiliated him on the field. Why was he taking it out on me? Finally, the whistle blew, ending practice. As I headed to the parking lot, my dad pulled in. I threw my duffel into the back of this Jeep Wrangler and climbed in. Bad day, he said. I'm quitting, I said. I hate Rooney. He pulled out of the lot. What happened? Nothing happened. Rooney doesn't know anything about football, that's all. He's stupid, and I'm quitting. He drove in silence for a while. At a red light, he looked over at me. You need to play on a team, Mick. Then I'll play on another team, I said. You can't play on another team. The teams are set by where you live. It's Rooney's team or no team, and you're not quitting. So get over it, whatever it is. I think we've probably all played on a team with someone who thought that they were naturally talented, better than everyone, but in reality, the kids who worked harder a lot of times are the ones that um, pull ahead of that kid who may have the natural talent but is not willing to put in the work to become great. And that's what's happening here with Mick.